Alrighty, I'm your man, Bad Chad, and we're on air. I got the moon tank done yesterday. I got it on front of the car anyways. There it is. Joey's taking a little, a little view of it. Um, I think it looks really good. It's kind of cool looking. It's kind of vintage looking. It looks like something they could have done in the day. And um, happy. Yay! Uh, this is where I'm at right at the present moment. I am putting a floor inside the car. We never had a floor in the car before, so now I'm, I'm putting a floor inside of it. What I've done is I went to my local hardware store. Um, I went to my local hardware store and bought myself some flat stock aluminum. So this would be aluminum facer for your house. So if you're putting um, a white facer on your house, this is the metal that you would use um, to face your, your trim. And that way there your trim wouldn't rot out so fast or whatever. It's very light. It's aluminum. I can't weld to it so you can see how I've done it. I've riveted it all in to all the cross members. I told Jolie we're not uh, building a race car, we're building an airplane. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that this would be very strong, how it's riveted all the way around in each piece and tied down. Um, the aluminum is very light, and um, that's what we're going for. We, I didn't build the car to make it heavy. I put a bunch of sheet metal in here, and then I would have started adding weight to it. So basically, um, when I come up with the aluminum, I just want to keep it as light as possible. And right at the present moment, I'm trying to... I'm trying to finish the floor off the hump here. I want to put a piece in like this side. I didn't put a piece up in there because the gas pedal goes down past that. I want to be able to go right to the floor. Um, uh, but I'm going to cover this side right here. And I took a piece of cardboard and I made myself a pattern. And it just goes on there ever so, just like so. Um, pretty basic, I just laid it on there, laid my straight edge on there, pushed my finger down on that. That gave me my line there, I just cut it off. So now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to make uh, that panel and how I'm screwing them on. I'm just riveting it down. Uh, the floor um, is coming along nicely. I'm not sure how far I'm going to keep continuing back, but there's a place for her to put her feet. There's a place to put the seat. We have to put a seat belt in it yet. Uh, there's a few odds and ends that I have to do. But that's what you do to get it done, I guess. Uh, I want to take that... There's a uh, self-tapper there. I want to take that out right now if I can. I'm not sure what size that is. That, it's the right size. Well, maybe. Just want to take that ground off. Put the ground back on after. So being in Thunder Bay and seeing all Russ's uh, tribute race cars that he's, you know, he's tribute, you know, I guess they're tributes, I guess, to people's race cars that he's restored and fixed and, and um, painted up and got them back to their glory. Um, basically, um, I took a lot of inspiration from what he was showing us. And uh, there is a lot of different race cars. I think that's the funnest part about our race car is how many different configurations there can be. Um, and still have fun. You know, it's not all cookie cutter stuff. You come up with your own idea, you come up with your own thought, and you build your car. And basically with every car that we saw down there, that was the deal. I need a, a ruler. See a ruler around, sweetheart? I get one. I don't know a ruler or not, but just gonna cut a piece of a this aluminum. So this is the aluminum that I'm using. I'm just going to cut a piece off. And I'll trace it off after this. I'm just, actually, I'm just going to mark this on here. Where I made the pattern, where I made the pattern, I have to make three quarters of an inch for the square stock. So I got square stock all stuck underneath there. You can see how it's got square stock in the back. It's just a skeleton with square stock, and all the rivets are in the square stock of the skeleton. So, I put this piece on there. I did not have the bend on it, so when I put the piece on there, I just had the pattern itself. So, I'm going to add that there. Actually, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to chase it. That's the bend. I'm going to bend that. That's going to lay on the flat stock. I'm going to have to 
put my bend on the top side. So that's my piece. I have not got the bend for the top side yet. So what, I, what I'm doing is, is I'm running a piece of tape. Tape's three quarter inch, uh, exact same size as, um, where did I lay that down at now? Three, huh? Nope, right here. Nope, not right there, right there. It's three quarter inch, just like the same size of the tape. So basically I'm using the tape for my three quarter inch mark. That's my bend mark, basically. Wish I knew where my other ruler was. Must have put it here somewhere. Haha. <laughs> Not set up right at the moment. Get my X-Acto knife. Alrighty, we get her. We'll get her here in a minute. We'll get her here in a minute. We'll get back together. We'll get back together. Alrighty. This stuff cuts fairly easy. What I mean by fairly easy, we can score it with a exacto knife. I don't want to cut my knee off. Probably not. Don't want to cut my knee off. Very thin stuff, very thin stuff. Very light, um, I think it's not adding any weight to Joanne's car whatsoever. I'm just gonna shear this end off down here in the shear. Basically, <laughs> it's funny, um, when I build, look how easy that cuts, right? It's like cutting my toenails. Basically any car that, or any race car uh, reminds me of cars that I build full time because you build, I build them my, my way, and when you build a race car, when I when I notice at Rust Place, they built them their way. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I wonder if I got that right. I wonder if I got that laid out on there right. I want the white part out. That would have been a a, a boo boo already. I'm saying this is the bottom. This is the top. Bends very easy. I'll wipe the black line off after. So we can just have the white floor and I'll just take a little thinner and wipe that off. Now I'm hoping I added three quarter inch with the tape and I allowed three quarter inch with the, with the pattern when I first put it on. So I'm hoping that this piece lays on the three quarter inch square to stock at the top of the, at the tunnel. And this lays over top of the three quarter inch stock on the floor. So basically that's what I want to work. So Jolene goes into the other side. I don't know which side you want to be on sweetheart, but she wants to be on the, on the winning side, don't you baby? Huh? 
on the winning side. All right. All right, there we go. You know what? I got it bent probably a little much. But I think that we got her. All right, so I'm gonna drill a hole in this bad boy. Get a drill. I'm just using aluminum, aluminum metal for facer, and I'm using aluminum rivets. And I'm going for it. And I'm going for it. Jolene helped me put the floor in, doing the rivets as I was drilling the holes. Thank you very much, sweetheart. Your help was kindly, kindly needed. So, I'm gonna pull this over here like this. We'll just put one wherever you think it may fit. You might think the drill bit's dull, but I've used one bit so far. I shouldn't have said that. Probably jinxed myself. All right. Now. Did I miss or did I hit? No, I probably missed. Hmm. Do you want that? Bend that up a little bit. I did too. Did I ever? There, yeah, that's how you do it. Just dump them on the, dump them out. Don't know if I hit some weld there or what I hit, but it took a while. Alrighty. Perfect. A little oil cannon going on the floor. That just means it's nice and thin. Oh, turn my mic off. Same way you do any floor, but I am rivening it in instead of 
instead of welding it, basically. Only reason being is, is I want it light as possible. checking to see if it feels right. It does. Feels good. It feels good. I'm probably going to do uh, the center of the dry shaft tunnel here. I'm probably going to do with that perforated metal back there. And the reason being is, is because if anything goes wrong, we'll be able to see what the issue is without taking looking underneath it. Um, basically, and to hold the dry shaft down, we have a piece right here that will hold uh, the dry shaft down in the front so it never will come up and hit her or do anything wrong. And then we'll put a piece along the back until we can get it, as far as we can get it, so the dry shaft can't come in the cabin. So you have to think about safety also, I guess. I guess that's the main part of it. I'm liking the moon tang up front. It's cool. It reminds me of what something somebody could have done years ago. That's what I like about it. Cross braced it because if it started shaking, um, if it started shaking, it could break off. You know, that's why I put the cross brace in it, basically, to make sure that it stays put. Give it some strength, too, actually. Basically, th basically this, this game here is how fast can you make the pattern and how fast can you drill the hole and put the rivet in? That's basically the game I'm playing here. And uh, it's going okay. So yesterday we managed to um, make the moon tank, uh, make the bracket, get it welded up, get it put on, and we got managed to get some of the floor put in. And uh, it was a good day. I put my 12 hours in yesterday. Didn't I, baby? Mm -hmm. I put my 12 hours in yesterday. You sleep good. You sleep good, I'll tell you. When you, uh, when you, work, hard, when you work hard and you put lots of hours in, you sleep good. And uh, you feel good about yourself in, 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 the, in the nighttime. You know, you got a bunch of work done, you feel good. I must have put a rivet there to start all you start with, probably right on top of one. That's why I drilled it so fast. Oh well, I won't put another one in. One more. On the mesh, I'll probably put that in with self tappers. On, on long this part because we've got square stock long here to self tap it on top that way there if we do have a problem with anything the dry shaft or anything like that we can <laughs> take the 5 16th uh, not driver or whatever and uh, just take it off and then I can I can deal with it I think that's a part of a race car is being able to work on it very easily uh, on the floor part where this is um, we're not not looking to work on anything underneath this floor part we're looking for feet and seat uh, we still have to put a seat belt in it. Uh, we have a fan that sent us a seat belt. Your seat belt's going in.
this. And try not to mark the floor up, but it is what it is. I want to let Jolene to mark the floor up. Basically a rivet gun, you just slide it in the hole. If you don't know, if you never ever use slide it in the hole, push it in there, fire it hard, hard down as you can, get a pry on it, hold it down until it breaks off. Pull the pin out, go for another one. And there's different sizes of rivets. This is a 1 8 I'm using. Just as fast as I can. Ouch. Just trying to space them out. Let's see what we're If someone's concerned about the firewall, if anybody gets concerned about the firewall, we can just put some tape over that. Be, be fine. A lot of, that caused a lot of commotion last time, is, is the firewall. I don't know if there's enough water in the radiator to burn somebody. <laughs> I shouldn't just joke. And there, I know there is. It's just there wouldn't be that much water to come out of something like this. And I don't know if it would get all the way back. Or but she is my queen, so... We want to protect her. I'm putting the kibosh on that drill, I know that. I'm putting the goodies right to her. And what I mean by pressure. Yeah, she's built just like an airplane, baby. Hope she flies as fast as an airplane. Huh? Don't you? Somebody think you're kidding when you're going to put a floor in with this aluminum, but this aluminum is very, very light. I think it's the right deal. Yep, it will. I know you'd want me. You want me riven your floor up too. I know, huh? Oh, my mic there. Get off the mic, Mike. Get off the mic.
jump out here for a second. Hmm. Alrighty, so I'm gonna have to clean them rivets up to put the ones back in there that are good. Keep the poopy ones out. The poopy ones got no no heads. Them's the poopy ones. So we have a half a tunnel on that side. And that can be straightened out on that. It's kind of got a swoop, swoop to it, and that's fine. I might put a piece in there, I'm not sure. But uh, basically, hmm. let's take a measurement. Take a measurement real quick, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with the center of it. Eight inch. So I've got this perforated metal here. Watch yourself, sweetheart. Now, that looks like a straight line, but it's not. And I'm going to check it out and see how far I need. Hmm. I could just go up to there. Uh, just want to know where that hits at. Right there. 44 inches. Nope, that's narrower than that. That's 8. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it here like this. 31 inches. 31 by 8. tape right here. Basically I'm half hafting to work on this car fairly quickly because um, Friday's coming quickly. Did I say 31 did I? All right I'm just gonna go across here. And I'm using this because I have it. I had a, I went out there and found some perforated metal. Um, didn't have enough. So I found this, and uh, this is what I'm using. Uh, I ate. I'm going to... the line. There you go. There's that line. So we'll cut a piece of this. We'll be putting this in with self-tappers because I'm going to want to be able to, to take it in and out um, in case something happens with the dry shaft. And <laughs> This is the material we're going to use. This, if I use the, the aluminum, I'm not going to be able to see. Uh, if we use this, this is nice and strong. and I can see it a little bit better.
We'll just throw that on there. I told you how I'm going to throw it down on there. I'm going to use uh, self tappers. So we're going to self tap that piece. We're just off the dry shaft there. I might put something. No, it's fine there. Not going to hit anything. It's fine there. No, a little bit of distance. So that'll be self tapped on the square stock down over top of the aluminum. I probably will put a little piece up and through here. That way there. Um, I don't want to put a piece of aluminum up here. Uh, when we first got this car going, the shifter was seized up. And I'm probably going to have to take the shifter back off and lube it up because it's sitting outdoors. I'd like to change the transmission fluid in there or put some more newer stuff in it. I want to make sure the drive shaft bolts are good and tight. And if I, if I close it off with aluminum, I'm not going to be able to see it. I'm going to have a rivet on there and have to drill it all off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stuff. I'm going to make a little thinner piece and we'll, and we'll make a piece that goes right over top of the whole thing. I probably will make a cardboard pattern of this so we can go right to the top. Or as far as that goes, I can just go up to there. As far as that goes, nothing not going to hurt a darn thing. Uh, make it, we want to make it as easy as possible. I'm figuring. But that's basically what's going on for the floor. Not going to do anything here for the floor. Jolene can't fall. Well, She's small, but she's not that small. She's not going to fall out to the floor there. Basically, when the door shuts, that's underneath the door. Uh, I don't know if you noticed or not, but we got the door shutting and opening. We got a hinge put in the bottom. Uh, Aiden and me did that here a while back ago. I, I put a little body molding there. I didn't like how it was squared off there. 36 Ford had a nice little uh, molding there. But we're, we're moving along quite nicely. Uh, we've got lots to do, believe me. We've got lots to do. I might throw some, I'm not sure yet. Um, I can aluminum all the back of it, but what I think I should do is I think I should wait until I get everything else done. Um, Jolene said that can be her escape hatch <laughs> out the back door. But uh, I don't think there's any need for an, an escape, but we have that over the back. There's nothing back there that I feel like that would hurt her at all. Um, that's that's just the back. We've Many people drive around with holes in their trunk of their car. So I'm basically saying that's a big hole in the trunk of the car. Uh, we've got, um, we'll have the transmission and dry shaft covered up there with this plate there. Uh, we've got, uh, we've got the holes drilled on the other side of the frame. We only did one side of the frame. Now we've got the other side drilled out. Watch your steps, we heard around that. We've got the other side drilled all out, or not drilled, I cut them out with the plasma cutter, freehanded them. I have to, I, have, I want to cut a window. This window is very heavy, and uh, next on my list is probably to get a window cut. Uh, this window is, believe it or not, that window is very heavy. So I want to cut that out, and maybe what I'll do, um, um, we had some stuff, I, whether you know it or not, or if you've been following, I printer burnt the garage down, building a window for the 55 Mercury. And the reason I built the window is because I never had one. Um, so anyways, uh, we made the window for that. And what I told everybody, like what I was going to do, I used plexiglass because of the forming ability. When you heat Lexan up, Lexan will bubble, basically. Uh, whether you use Lexan or plexiglass, it still seems to scratch. So basically what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to make a cut a window out of this for this for plexiglass and we are going to use our clear wrap that we have bought to make plexiglass indestructible. As you see then people go into the, into the diamond stores in LA or California when they were trying to rob all the diamonds, they were trying to beat all the glass out with a hammer and they could not beat it out because it had a protectant on it. This stuff is for uh, hurricane, hurricanes and disasters. What's the, what's the other one? A hurricane, what's the other one? Uh, what's, when, what's when the earth shakes? Oh. An earthquake, so a glass doesn't break. From what I understand, thousands and thousands of people were killed in, in uh, San Francisco when they had an earthquake from the glass from up above. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is we're gonna wrap the Pexi glass, not that I'm saying it's gonna shatter and hurt anything, um, but we're, just, we're gonna put it on to show you how we do it. So I have to keep rocking and rolling. I'm going to screw that down, make a piece for the top of the, the tunnel. I might make a couple more pieces of aluminum here and there. Um, I, have to, I have to do a lot of stuff. You come back tomorrow and we'll show you. Have a good one, everybody. We're getting that race car ready.